Hello and welcome to Tech Circle. You're listening to Tech This Week, where we bring you up to speed with the most important weekly developments in the enterprise and emerging technology space in India. In today's episode, we discuss the union budget highlights, Jeff Bezos steps down as Amazon CEO, AWS earnings, Accenture's acquisition spree, Wazirx's new online petition campaign, and the top funding deals of the week. I'm Shweta Sharma and joining me from the Tech Circle newsroom are my colleagues Pail Ganguly, Supriya Roy and Debangna Ghosh. So the week started with the Union Budget 2021 uh, and in a boost to startups the finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman proposed to incentivize the incorporation of one person companies by allowing them to grow without restrictions on paid up capital and turnover. Yeah, big move. Also, under tax benefits, the finance minister announced an extension in the eligibility for claiming tax holiday for startups by one more year till March thirty first of the coming year. That's two thousand twenty two, and this comes as a breather for many startups in the country who are still battling with um, all the impact that's been dealt from COVID nineteen. And to further incentivize emerging businesses in the country, the minister proposed extending the capital gains exemption for investment in startups. Also, by one more year till the same date, March thirty first, two thousand twenty two. Well, uh, they, she also announced a uh, rupees thousand five hundred crore uh, allotment to promote uh, digital modes of payment and further boost digital transactions in the country. While uh, payment industry executives uh, seem to uh, say that you know this will compensate for the zero MDR, which hit them pretty bad. Uh, clarity on this is still awaited. Talking about fintech, there was also the announcement of a friendly tax structure for onshoring alternative investment funds to Ahmedabad-based Gift City. And uh, talking money, there was also the issue of Google Tax, which now covers foreign e-commerce companies in India as well. Actually, it it was always covering foreign e-commerce companies, so it's a it's basically an update on last year's equalization levy of two percent, which was being imposed on specifically foreign internet services companies like Google, Adobe, etc. So now this year, what has happened the during the uh, um, budget session, the uh, central uh, government announced that the ambit of categories and companies that has uh, that were under the tax have been expanded now. So now it will also include e-commerce companies like Amazon, Flipkart, Zoom, Uber, and others. So they'll have to pay a two percent tax on whatever the transaction value they manage to cover over a year. Moving on to Alphabet's earnings, the Google parent, uh, the company announced its quarter four earnings this week, recording a twenty three percent rise to fifty six point nine billion dollars for the quarter. And for the first time, the company disclosed its numbers uh, for Google Cloud business separately, which recorded a loss of five point six billion dollars for the twenty twenty fiscal. Overall, the cloud revenue was up forty seven percent year over year at thirteen billion dollars for the financial year. Extending from 2019 to 20. Well, uh, compare this, Supriya, to the Amazon Web Services, which reported revenues of 12.7 billion dollars for the fourth quarter alone of 2020 earlier this week. So the revenues were up 28 percent from the year before quarter, at uh, which was at around uh, you know 10 billion dollars. Now, AWS is the biggest revenue stream for Amazon, um, with Microsoft's Azure being a close competitor. And um, Azure actually grew its revenues by fifty percent for the quarter ending December twenty twenty. Um, another word on the street is that AWS will gain prominence now that its CEO Andy Jassy uh, will take over from Jeff Bezos, uh, who was the chief executive uh, for the e-commerce company. That was quite a shocker. Yeah, what do, what do you guys think uh, Bezos is planning to do now? I think he has plenty of money to do nothing but from his letter to the employees, He'll I guess. Travel to Mars. Ah, oh yeah, that that <laughs> probably is. In that, space that probably X. is on the cards. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, my guess is his focus will be on long-term projects, including some of the non-profits he is a part of. The final transition will happen only in the third quarter of 2021. um so uh, bezos will focus on his non profit day one fund which operates high quality and full scholarship montessori preschools um blue origin which uh, aims to you know produce reusable launch vehicles for suborbital space flight services 
as well as the Bezos Earth Fund, which was announced last year, and which kind of backs scientists, activists, and organizations who are focusing on climate change. So lots to do there, and maybe a trip to Mars. <laughs> uh okay moving on uh, irish technology major accenture has been on uh, acquisition spree this week and uh, actually since the starting of the year and after acquiring argentinian cloud native and agile development firm volox in january uh, this month alone it has announced three acquisitions and a strategic investment uh, debangna would you like to brief us on that Yes, so I'll start with the latest one first. Uh, so this Tuesday, it announced acquisitions of Oakland-based uh, change management consulting firm Future State and uh, Tokyo-based uh, cloud e-commerce solution provider BusyNet System. Uh, then, via its uh, venture capital firm Accenture Ventures, it plans to make a strategic investment in AI and mixed reality solution provider Touchcast. As of February one. It was to acquire cloud engineering solutions provider Imaginia to accelerate its uh, cloud native product and platform engineering services. And what about the new acquisition? Uh, is there more information on how it's going to exactly help Accenture or even the financial details of the deals? Uh, nothing has been disclosed about the financial aspects of these acquisitions and the investment so far. um in terms of uh, you know future state um so what happens is it provides change management consulting services for companies in the life sciences consumer packaged goods and technology industries um uh, around 75 employees of future state are expected to join um you know accenture post the acquisition and it will complement the company's uh, most recent talent and acquisition buy uh which is the organization design consultancy kate kessler which it acquired in may last year yeah and busynet system provides salesforce commerce cloud based solutions for e-commerce sites in japan with a with its proprietary uh, order management system for the apparel and retail industries now the startup's 40 about 40 employees will join accenture interactive in japan in in the design and marketing wing Uh, lastly touchcast will also join accenture ventures engagement and investment program called project spotlight which aims to connect startups with top global organizations to solve issues uh, through the program touch touchcast will also co innovate with accenture at its uh, innovative hubs labs and liquid studios to increase time to market Moving on the week also resulted in multiple reactions coming in from the cryptocurrency industry as an effect of a Lok Sabha bulletin mentioning CBDCs for a bill tabled in the ongoing parliament session titled the cryptocurrency uh, and regulation of official digital currency bill 2021 the bill proposes to create a framework for operationalizing CBDCs this came days after RBI simply mentioned central bank digital currencies or CBDC Yeah, simply mentioned. Indeed, all that RBI said was that it was exploring the possibility as to whether there is a need for a digital version of uh, fiat currency, and in case there is, um, how to operationalize it. That is, quote and unquote, nothing else. Now, CBDCs are um, in other countries are used uh, through blockchain-based tokens to represent the digital form of fiat currencies. Now, about the bill, I'll quickly quote word by word what the bulletin says, and then we'll move on to the guest segment to further uh, unfold the development. So, the bill proposes to create a facilitative framework for creation of the official digital currency to be issued by RBI. The bill also seeks to prohibit all private cryptocurrencies in. um india however it allows for certain exceptions to promote the underlying technology of cryptocurrency and its uses i think that was what the rbi said even last year supriya didn't they that you know they will look for a digital rupee but they don't want cryptocurrency yeah. in the country Yeah. yeah, it gets harder to track. Like I remember a few years ago, there was this talk of Lakshmi, the cryptocurrency that Indian mm -hmm. government would come up with. So just right. every year, uh, a set of people wake up and you know there's news about it. We report on it. Uh, yes, this uh, quite con confusing. It's actually because of this whole announcement. Now cryptocurrencies are trading at a much lower rate in India. Right. Right. and to take us through industry sentiments over the matter and uh, this new industry petition we have with us cryptocurrency exchange and trading platform wazirx co-founder and ceo nishchal shetty hi nishchal thank you for joining us 
Kesubia, thanks for having me on the call. So, it was all these Wazir Express releases have been touted as this person who's been um, pushing for positive crypto regulation with the whole hashtag of India wants crypto campaign for over 800 days now. And now to for all of it to come down to this one um, you know peak into whether whether it's still being debated if india still wants crypto or does not want crypto what does it feel at a company level and where do you see this going forward how do you trace these uh, steps forward because nobody's quite sure how rbi wants to operationalize it and whether the bill will be passed a lot of uncertainties around like it's always been the case with cryptos in india yes yeah, see you can look at it both ways uh, one there is a uh, fear is there going to be a ban again or you know is there going to be negative regulation but i uh, like to see it as a step forward uh, because now we've gone from the government not having said anything where uh, there was complete uncertainty so today there is a bill in the parliament <coughs> which uh, nobody knows the contents of that but at least there's a bill and i believe there's a start of a regulatory process now if the bill is negative i'm sure with industry participation will make it so that it gets in the right direction but i think this is a net net positive direction for the industry okay that that's a fresh perspective let's uh, let me ask you the million dollar question i'm pretty sure everybody is still you know wondering there's this one bit uh, this is one line of the entire uh, mention of the bill in the bulletin about how, how the bill will allow for certain exceptions to promote the underlying technology of cryptocurrency and its uses do you have any idea what could this could mean uh-huh. or have you I gone about I, trying to find it out or any kind of sense towards it no so the you know the thing is uh, <clears throat> this is also i would say uh, the probably because there's not been any industry participation in this bill yet yeah uh, which is why we hear terms like private cryptocurrency is something that has been dif- uh, written out in that description of the bill mm. saying private cryptocurrencies will be banned with certain exception that is what you said mm. but there's no such term as private cryptocurrency because if we look at bitcoin for example mm. it's a public decentralized blockchain mm. so there's nothing like a private cryptocurrency so it's very hard for any of us uh, to even uh, uh, you know guess what private cryptocurrency means And mm-hmm. now we are waiting for to see what the definition from the government end will be. Because essentially, anybody can be invested in this one form of asset. It's not controlled by by any one party. So the whole nature of it is all completely public from day one. Um, yeah, that's a that's a baffling thing. Uh, if you think about it, in a regular world, you have public and private. Where public is owned by the government, yeah. private is owned by um, corporations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, cryptocurrency is decentralized, not owned by anyone. There is no definition to this. So yeah. you know that that's the interesting point out here. Yeah so if we if you were to really think hard is there any element of the whole cryptocurrency ecosystem that is private i wonder exactly decentralization yeah. is all about um, you know yeah. permissionless is the word here yeah it's I, not public or private yeah. it's more permissionless i remember this this a uh, few days ago when this payments and settlements report was out about how you know rbi is thinking on um, doing something with cbdc everybody was uh, super hyped about it because at least there's a, there's a mention like you said there's at least some sort of it is being brought into the discussion table at least now but i still don't quite know how to make sense of it all because i don't know how it will be operationalized how the infrastructure is going to be built around it who are going to be the stakeholders i mean at this point everything is just estimation do you want to um, you know Uh, take me further with how this set system could look like with cbdcs as well as how other uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in the country could also be part of the ecosystem if if the world were to be a perfect place how would it work in your mind with the cryptocurrencies in the country sure uh, let me tell you first about cbdc i think this is a, a really uh, yeah. important point yeah, fiat, in yeah. india today for mm-hmm. example when you send uh, uh, money to any of your friends online there i uh, there might be chances where your money gets stuck for like 4 or 5 days to, because of some banking error and the reason that happens is because there is a settlement period and that settlement period is about 2 3 to 7 days today in the regular financial world if uh, cbdc comes in then your settlement becomes instant so n- your money will never be stuck and that's the beauty of uh, cbdcs if the rbi brings it so i think it's an amazing uh, thing that the rbi wants to work on cbdc definitely there are implementation uh, difficulties but there is no technical difficulty because blockchain is built it's there the te- technology exists so it's just going to be about implementation it, it will take time but i think the day it comes in our digital economy you know i would say it'll double or triple in size mm. just because of this ease of use the second mm. part is up how to crypt, uh, your other cryptocurrencies coexist with the cbdc 
see the thing is other cryptocurrencies are not here to compete with aina with our uh, rupee the other cryptocurrencies have their use cases on their own blockchain for example if you want to run a program on the ethereum blockchain you have to use ether which is a cryptocurrency that is built for the ethereum blockchain mm. now because ethereum blockchain is decentralized i cannot tell them that please take my inr and let me run the program i mm. have to pay in ether over there so these are the use cases which are specific to every blockchain and for that you need their own currency mm. so you know the, there is always this confusion that inr is there why do you need ether or why do you need bitcoin because i need bitcoin to use the bitcoin blockchain mm. i cannot pay in any other currency so that's like the biggest difference that you know people usually don't understand in the business mm-hmm. okay okay uh, moving on to the the parliament session can you trace certain steps on what the industry is planning to think or planning to do in the in the days to come what is the industry's approach on uh, you know tackling this whole matter yeah uh, quite a few things i think first um, online they are running this campaign uh, and i've been running india wants crypto for a long time but now as an industry what we're doing is we're tra- running a campaign where we're asking all our users to send personal emails to their mps of their constituency what this will do is that the mps will get to know how many of their uh, constituents are interested in cryptocurrency involved in cryptocurrency because unless they're not vocal how will our leaders know that we want to explore this technology so i think this is something that we're running online and mm-hmm. in the offline world what we are trying to do is trying to meet as many mps personally as possible mm-hmm. give them a industry uh, like a representation mm-hmm. with, uh, like it's like a two pager where we mm-hmm. listed out why this bill should be referred to a standing committee mm-hmm. so we are not against regulation yeah. we're just that please involve the industry in the regulation process yeah. and that will help india you know regulate in the right way okay perfect that sums up all the questions i had in mind mr uh, thank you so much for your time great sounds good thanks yeah. a lot have a good day Moving on uh, to the funded deals of the week, fantasy gaming and esports platform Mobile Premier League raised $95 million in a Series D round of funding. The round was led by Composite Capital and Moose Strategic Ventures, uh, with participation from base partners, RTP Global, and others. With this round, MPL has moved a step closer to the unicorn status and is now valued at $945 million. To comment on how the conversations for the deal went ahead. we have senior vice president of mpl jo uh, who will be joining us uh, as a guest welcome to the show jo when did you start the conversation particularly um, was it early in 2020 when you knew that you would be raising a large tele large round and that's when you had the conversation like i said we we we've, we've been in touch with the with the, with the groups of investors all the way since 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 2019 um, you know we've been in touch with various folks um Uh, you know these guys who came in um, we got to know them better uh, mid last year and um, and then they kind of got more comfort they learned about the business saw the traction and then they ended up uh, coming and participating in this round good how do you plan to utilize the capital uh, you know growing it will anything change in terms of strategy for the company? no i i i think the i think you know this is um this is quite quite uh, uh squarely a growth round for us um and and we have primarily growth investors on board which means that you know i think we have fortunately we're we're very, very lucky but i think we have found a decent amount of product market fit and um you know we have a we have a flywheel that works we have a a, a go to market strategy that is effective and the way that you know we look at this is that this is just more fuel to the fire right i wouldn't say it has changed our strategy i would just say it 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 has just given us kind of more fuel to get there quicker if that makes sense and what is the uh, end destination which you're talking about is it uh, adding more games to the uh, repeta is it like you know growing your product or team or you know we want to be the um the biggest mobile gaming esports platform or mobile esports platform in the world right so um we want to be a global business we want to be in as many markets as possible where we where we can be um we want to be integrated with as many games as possible and basically create a future where you know you can have esports tournaments um for the biggest games in the world on your mobile phone that you can enter instantaneously um and and participate and compete with 
you know, other, other gamers all across the world instantly, right? And we want to have the biggest tournaments in the world on one app. Ultimately, we just want to enable competition globally on, on games. Um, and so this just helps us get there faster, right? There are many moving, there are many, there are many components and parts of, you know, things that need to get done so that we get there. We need to be able to expand internationally. We need to make sure we integrate with more and more games. We need to really invest in the right tech and the right product um, uh, 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 team and, and, and people to, to achieve those goals. Um, but, you know, that is the overarching goal for us. How deep is your market presence in India and uh, will your, uh, you know, upcoming strategy on taking this uh, to a larger audience also mean that, you know, you want to expand your practically? If so, like, you know, what kind of market share do you have outside of it and in which country? Yeah, so um, in terms of how deep we are in India, I think we're, we're, we're just scratching the surface, right? I think we have, um, we've reached about, you know, 60 million um, downloads at the, the, at the moment. Um, we have about, uh, you know, we have several million kind of active users now on the app. But, you know, conservatively, I think there's there's at least 100 million mobile gamers in India, right? So I think um, I think there's there's a long way to go uh, in India. And um, unfortunately, you know, there and, and you know, uh, there are many other the, the gaming scene in, in India is is growing just generally, right? I think interest in, in gaming is growing. We're seeing great developers pop up. We're we're seeing other peers of ours who are entering the space and helping grow the sector. Um, so we think we're we're in the very early innings of, of opportunity in India. Um, so I think that answers the first part of your question. Um, the second part, I would say. You know, today we're we're live in um, India and in Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia is still a, a, a very nascent market, um, and it's a smaller part of our business, but it's it's a business that is growing quickly. Um, and hopefully, by the end of the year, we're in a couple of you know a few more markets uh, and, uh, and and live and operational there as well. Thanks, Joe, for joining us uh, in Tech this week. Uh, in the biggest deal this week, Zetwork raised a 120 million Series D round led by US-based Green Oaks Capital and Lightspeed Venture Partners. Zetwork is a B2B manufacturing services marketplace. The company said that it will be use the capital to enhance its technological infrastructure as well as expand into newer categories and regions. Yeah, also digital healthcare platform provider Medibuddy, formerly called DocsApp, raised $20 million led by healthcare-focused private equity firm Invasint. With this transaction, the total amount raised by the company uh, for its Series B round reached $40 million. Now, the company plans to use these funds for further, uh, to further, uh, to further strengthen, strengthen their doctors and hospital base, patient reach, product, technology and brand. All right, with that, it's a wrap on this episode of Tech This Week. Stay tuned in for more interesting news and updates. Thank you very much for listening.